Hello and welcome to the demonstrational video on the 2019 Auto Trail Tribute T615. So I'll run you through the outside controls and then we'll move on to the inside. So first things first, uh, the bonnet catch for this uh, Fiat cab is just here. So you pull that, that releases the bonnet. This has got blinds on the uh, side windows and on the windscreen. So to operate these blinds, you just put pinch these two tabs here together and then draw it across and there's a magnetic strip that joins those two together. Exactly the same operation for the windscreen. You just pinch these little um, catches together here, draw those across and the, there's a, the magnetic strip that's on here joins the corresponding one on the other side which is just there so you pull those across join them together in the middle there's a little recess there to make way for the reversing uh rear view mirror which is incorporates the reversing camera so that's how the blinds work when you draw these closed just make sure that this bar here is drawn back straight to avoid any uh plucking uh, of the blinds so that they go back straight and they don't get damaged uh, The tire pressures are displayed on this pillar here um, But it's worth referring to the tires themselves uh, as Sometimes uh, motorhomes are fitted with uh, Specialist camper tires that have got reinforced sidewalls. So therefore they uh, use greater pressures uh, Your fuel fill is just here and you need the cab key uh, to gain access to that so that's your diesel fuel and you need your cab key for that so moving on to the bonnet then <clears throat> the catch is just underneath here in the middle so underneath the bonnet then we have uh, washer fluid fill uh, coolant uh, brake fluid oil fill dipstick uh, if you ever need to jump start this vehicle or jump start another vehicle from this one Then the uh, the battery isn't housed under the bonnet. It's just underneath the uh, passengers uh, Where the passengers feet would go There's a plate there uh, So to gain access to the terminals on this the positive terminal is just under here So sometimes you need to just put your key into there uh, lift up this plastic tab and that is the positive terminal. So red lead onto there, and then your earth or negative is just here. So black lead onto there, red lead onto there. That's how you jump start the vehicle or jump start another vehicle from this one. So moving around the motor home then, around the outside, uh, this is uh, access to your storage. Uh, the battery, the leisure battery is housed just underneath this plate here. And um, there's nothing else to talk about in there really it's just access to storage but you've got access to that from the inside as well moving along then uh, these are ventilation vents for the fridge what it does is it draws cool air in at the bottom expels warm air at the top so that's the cooling for the fridge um, in the summer months when it needs to vent uh, more aggressively then leave uh, those covers as, as you see them now but you can get these winter covers for the fridge and what it does is it prevents uh, heavy wind uh, coming through the vents here also handy if you're washing it um, so these covers slide on um, to protect this vent uh, just make sure they get, get those the right way just one sec yeah so these covers um, the top that's the top those clips there they slide into there push the vent on like so and turn those little tabs around and that retains the uh, vent in position in most cases you won't need those it's really only they're, they're actually referred to as winter covers <laughs> so we have an awning light above the um, those covers the awning itself uh, is wound out via a uh, there's a winder that goes into that little looped hook there uh, there is a separate video on how to use uh, the awning and I'll include that in the description for this video. Just on the door, uh, the main habitation door, it's got a, an additional security lock which is um, engaged by swinging that around like so and then you use the key with the red tab on it labelled Fiamma uh, to lock that in position and push that, uh, push that in so that engages the extra security lock. <clears throat> These two things here 
This is an external gas supply, so if you had an external barbecue or a heater or any gas appliance for outside, then um, you can tap into the gas supply uh, uh, of the bottles that are mounted in the gas locker, which we'll come to in a second, but that is an external gas supply if you're gonna use a barbecue, for example. <clears throat> Next one along is the water fill, uh, clearly labeled water. So you just put a hose pipe into this and literally fill it until it, it pours back out. So that's filling the water tank, which is uh, housed underneath the motorhome. So that's your uh, fresh water supply uh, that will be used for your shower, uh, washing pots, etc. I wouldn't recommend that you drink from that, use bottled water. Um, you do have to sterilize it if you want to drink from that. The water tank is housed just underneath here and there's a drain for that, which we'll come to in a second. This model has been fitted with a bike rack. Uh, the way that works is that uh, you pull this bar down here. Okay, so pull this down like so. Bikes sit, the bike wheels sit onto here. Those straps go over the wheels and go into those ratchets like so. So the bike then is sitting on with its wheels here. And then these bars are secured onto the crossbar of the bike to secure the bikes in position. So there is a reversing camera on this, it's just mounted there, that's the lens for it, just make sure that's uh, kept clean. Uh, if it's raining and there's water droplets on that, it will distort the, uh, the vision through your camera. Working around the motorhome then, uh, the fresh water tank which I referred to uh, on how to fill around the other side, it's drained via this tap here, so it's just a turn on that tap. Uh, I, what I would recommend is as you're turning it, support this here and then turn this nozzle here. Uh, that drains down the fresh water tank. It's very important that you do that if you're going to get freezing conditions. Uh, the water tank uh, is a vessel of water. If water's left in there and it freezes, it'll expand and therefore crack the uh, tank and the pipe work, etc. So it's important that you drain all the water out of the motorhome. Uh, particularly uh, if you're not going to use it you don't want stagnant water in there but particularly in freezing conditions uh, it'll stop uh, it'll prevent frost damage above that we have the toilet cassette so all the toilet waste goes into this uh, cassette here and um, there's an indication on the inside to tell you when that's full to drain this uh, or empty the waste you push this little lever up here Pull the cassette out and then that nozzle on the end here push that out take the cap off the end unscrew the cap and then pour the um, waste from this cassette out as you're pouring away press this button in here it lets air in as the liquid is being expelled from the uh, funnel at the end that prevents glugging and splashing this cassette requires a chemical to break down all the toilet waste and turn everything into liquid. So to fill that with the uh, to uh, toilet chemical, slide this across like so. And then this handle here, you just turn that and that gives you access into the toilet cassette. So pour the required amount of chemical into there and then just put a little bit of water in the bottom, uh, give it a splash around and it's ready to use again. Um, before you put the chemical in and, and just after you've emptied it it's probably wise to fill it full of fresh water give it a glug round and then empty it again to, to um, make sure that it's fully clean before you put the toilet cassette back in you must make sure that that's straight because that goes onto a corresponding mechanism on the toilet itself so to slide that back in <clears throat> it's simply just push back in and then uh, you can see that uh, tab there is in its uh, retained position <coughs> this does have wheels on it actually so the wheels there you can see uh, for uh, easy uh, you can wheel it over to the um, disposal point and it's got an extendable handle which you can see extends like so so you can wheel this off to the disposal point without needing to carry it next to the toilet cassette housing we have the gas locker this this model has been fitted with 
refillable gas bottles. Um, so the gas is filled. Uh, fuel stations often have this gas. If not, you can go to a uh, LPG specialist, which will um, always have gas that you can uh, refill these bottles with. So you just fill it via this here. You can't overfill it. They only ever go to, uh, I think it's 80%. Uh, the levels on the gas bottles are viewed via this here, and there's two of those. Uh, so you've got two gas bottles. You can change over which bottle you want to have preference via this change over valve here, and you just turn that around like so. The gas bottles themselves are switched on via these taps here, so if you turn it clockwise, that will be off. Anti-clockwise, uh, obviously, will be then on. When you first uh, switch on the gas, um, you need to get the gas flowing, so you need to get a pure flow of gas coming through uh, these pipes, but I'll show you how to do that when we come to the appliances on the inside. Next to that we have the uh, electrical hookup point, so that's where you would plug your lead into to uh, give you 240 volts to all the appliances on the inside of the vehicle. Uh, also, this you charges up your leisure battery, so this engages the 12 volt charger to charge up your leisure battery. Um, and so, yeah, you, you're going to need a cable for this. It's not got one I noticed, so but we sell those in the shop. So that's where you plug in to uh, your mains electric hookup. <clears throat> the wastewater. So everything that goes down the sink and down the shower after you've washed up, etc. Uh, is gathered in a waste tank which again is housed underneath the vehicle that is drained down uh, via this pipe and tap here so that's the uh, tap that you open up to get rid of the waste there's nothing in this at the moment so it's that handle there that releases the wastewater this vent here is for the boiler um, so the hot water boiler Whenever the boiler is being used, it's important that it looks like this. Uh, again, it's got a cover for this, so if you try and use the boiler with the cover on, it, it just won't work, it'll keep failing and it just won't operate. This is the cover for that boiler, uh, and it clips on via these two little lugs here. So they sit on top like that, and then just give it a tap on the bottom. And um, that prevents road debris, dirt, insects, uh, etc. going into the vent for the boiler, which you don't want. But again, just to reiterate, it will not work with that cover on. So to get your boiler operational, you just pull on the bottom here and remove that cover. Okay, we're inside the motorhome now. Uh, so I'll walk you around the uh, controls on the inside. The winder for the awning is just here, so you can see how that hook goes onto that looped uh, hook on the uh, awning itself, on the corner of the awning. So that's how you uh, wind the awning in, but there's a separate video for that. <clears throat> the control panel, the main control panel, is above the habitation door, which we have here. There's a blind on this door, which is pushed up and down like so, uh, for darkening. So the main control panel, you switch it on via this button here. This switches your lights on and off in the motorhome, so all the lights will be switched on and off via this. That's your water pump, so in order to get water out of your taps in the shower and in the, in the kitchen sink, that pump must be engaged. And you can hear that run. Don't let the pump run with no water in the system, it will burn the pump out. So when you first fill up with water, ensuring that the uh, tap is closed on the tank itself so it retains the water come in the motorhome switch on this pump let the taps run on both hot so you've got a single lever mixer tap here so switch it over to hot switch the tap on wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out of that tap uh, and then you know that you've filled the system and all the pipe work including the boiler full of water because at the moment it'll just be full of air so you need to do that on the hot side and then switch it over to the cold side and do exactly the same. Switch it on until you get a pure flow of water and it's not spluttering and then you know that you've primed the water system. Um, if you try and switch the boiler on without priming the water system on the hot side, 
you're just heating thin air in the boiler so it'll, it can damage the boiler so you, it's important that you prime the water system and get it full of water before switching the boiler on so back to the control panel we've dealt with the water pump that's your external awning light on and off switch this here deals with your levels so it's hard to see on this video but if you press this here there we go right so if you press this here it'll run you through the level so we've got fresh water and wastewater at zero percent you press the button again and um, it'll allow you to select your engine battery if you let's say your leisure battery is flattened i wouldn't recommend this but if you want to you can select your engine battery by pressing this button here so you can see that's changed over to vehicle just leave it on leisure that's the best way of dealing with it and um, so if you press the level button again you can adjust whether you want it in 24 hour format that's just telling you the model number of the control panel uh, so the leisure battery is showing poor at the moment probably needs a charge however we are we have got everything switched on we've got the lights switched on etc uh, so that just runs you through your levels and then that's your select button if you wanted to select you know setting the time and the um, selecting your leisure battery so I'll just walk you around in a uh, methodical manner and then uh, we'll go around the outside and then we'll we'll go through all the controls in that way so your kitchen then there's nothing really to talk about here it's a straightforward controls for the hob um, just be careful that you don't pull this down with these being red hot because if you pull that down it's a glass lid and um, these will retain heat and eventually it, it could uh, crack the uh, the lid there so just be careful of that this is a socket bank so if you lift that up it just reveals uh, some extra sockets there so moving on around to the bathroom we have <clears throat> same system um, when you're filling up your water just obviously switch over to hot wait until you get a pure flow of water coming out your shower uh, but it's just the same single lever mixer tap as i showed you in the kitchen exactly the same on the um, bathroom sink the toilet uh, is used uh, like this so when you want to use the toilet obviously lift up the lid this will slide around um, so the way you use the toilet lift up the lid this handle here opens and closes that blade which I showed you on the toilet cassette itself so uh, when you're ready to use the toilet open up the blade use the toilet and then that's your flush button so press that button there and it'll flush around in here it uses the uh, water from the fresh water tank so there's no need to fill any separate tank when you're finished close the blade back up uh, you don't want to be driving with the liquid sloshing around in there for obvious reasons so that's how the toilet is used when the toilet is full uh, I think there is a there's an LED I think that appears here that uh, I'll show you that the, the tank is reading full but you can actually see down um, when you open up that blade and the chemical that is used is bright blue so you can actually see down into that so moving on around then we have the heating controls here um, this uses blown air as well as a static um, fire so the way this works is this this here is dealing with your uh, blown air system so you've got three positions off auto or manual so what that's referring to is the speed of the fan so on manual here i don't know if you can hear that the fan is running and then you can select the speed that you want the fan to run at using this slider here if you select auto it will run uh, at a speed that is relevant to the temperature that you've selected so what i would do is just leave it on auto if you want the fan to blow so what that's doing is distributing the heat that is emitted from this heater unit to switch it on on gas it's this control here 
you can probably hear that's clicking and trying to ignite so let's turn it around to maximum it's probably drawing the gas through because we've only just switched the gas on so to ignite the fire that's clicking away you push this button in here so that's now stopped clicking uh, so it's lit uh, just keep the button pressed in for 20 seconds or so and then slowly release it and you'll actually hear that uh, fire up if it starts clicking again it means it's not lit then just press this button down again there is a pilot light that you can see through this little inspection hatch here but it is very difficult to see the best way is to listen uh, to hear that the uh, automatic ignition has stopped clicking so that's how you operate it on gas I'll just turn that off if you want to heat the motor home on electric then it's a separate control which is just here <clears throat> there is three settings for this so you have 500 watts a thousand watts or 2000 watts the reason that they do this is if you're on a site which is low ampage which has only got a low ampage fuse then you would need to be using the lower setting and uh, particularly in the european countries they, they tend to have a lower ampage uh, set up on their electrics if you're in the uk you can use the 2000 but just be mindful that you're not using the microwave at the same time because you'll be drawing too much power and then the control for the heating is so that's the thermostat uh, that's being the hottest on nine and then you just adjust it accordingly and the middle position is off so you've got two uh, means of heating electric and gas you can use them both together i think on this and then that is the fan to distribute the heat around uh, what happens is it blows it out of these vents here so you switch the heater on itself and then if you choose to do so you can also have the fan running and it'll distribute that heat through these vents here moving on to the side here the underneath this bench seat here is where i showed you where the boiler uh, vent was so the controls for the boiler are here the way these work is <clears throat> again you've got two heating uh, fuels either gas or electric this side is electric so you've got i think these use two different wattages so the lower one being the lower wattage setting uh, sorry the lower one being the higher wattage setting as denoted here and then the top the, this toggle switch in the middle it's off and then the upper one is at the lower wattage setting the uh, gas heater <clears throat> so to heat you got your water on gas it's the one next to it here so you've got 50 degrees at the top and 70 degrees at the bottom when uh, you're heating it on gas you must um, ensure that it's lit so again it's an automatic ignition system this this probably won't fail now because we've got um we've got gas coming into the motorhome if it fails ah, there we go so there's a red warning light there to come on to say that this boiler hasn't ignited um <clears throat> so what that probably means in this case is that it's not a time to draw enough gas through from the bottle so you switch it off wait for the light to go out and then try and reignite it okay so i had the heating uh, vent cover on there so it won't ignite with that on it and um, so i've taken that off now it should hopefully ignite Okay, I'm going to come back to this in a second because uh, I've tried to ignite it with the vent cover on uh, and it senses that the cover is on there because it has a carbon monoxide sensor on it. So it's trying to vent, it's hitting the cover, which I uh, didn't take off, um, and it, it's sensing that there's carbon monoxide, so it, it, won't, it won't ignite, it's a safety feature. So there could be a build-up in the, in the sensor of... Uh, the exhaust gas so i'm going to come back to that uh at the last thing i'm just going to let that vent off for a second the boiler itself is housed here 
underneath this bench seat. I'll just take the cushions off. Okay, so the boiler is just here. Um, again, it's another vessel full of water. It's important that you drain that down. Um, it's probably the most important thing, this one, because if water's left in there and it freezes uh, and cracks the boiler, it's a really expensive uh, replacement. So it has a means of draining down the water from this system and it's this toggle switch here so in the upright position you can see it there uh, that is open in the horizontal position like that either way horizontal that is closed so that will retain the water within the boiler um, just before you uh, use this boiler before you switch it on then, as I said, you've got to purge the water system through. So you've got to make sure that that's closed before you start trying to purge the um, air out of the boiler and filling it full of water. Otherwise, it'll just drop all the water through this valve here and onto the floor underneath the motor. So that vent, that uh, tap there is now closed. That's in the usable position, and that's how it should be um, when you're using the boiler. Uh, in winter, or whenever you're not using the motor, in the upright position like so just while we're here and I've got the um, covers the cushions off the bench seats the way that the bed is made up is you've got this um, cushion here and then also on this side you've got a corresponding cushion and you can probably see this has got a leg on it that comes down like so and then you just pull make sure that the legs down and supported and then you just pull that together and um, you can probably see it better from that angle like that do exactly the same on that side so that these two are drawn together and then lie these uh, cushions flat across this here and then that makes one big bed if you wanted to you could just use this as um, like a three-quarter single bed uh, just by laying those cushions flat onto this uh, base here Okay, so <clears throat> I've now got the boiler ignited. I've just let it vent off, having tried to light it with the cover on. Um, so you can see there's no red warning light there now. Um, we've got the uh, boiler on uh, the 70 degree position. <clears throat> there's no water in it now, so I'm going to switch it off. So um, again, don't heat the, don't switch the boiler on. Uh, for any length of time at all with no water in it because it's designed to uh, be uh, heating water and not thin air because there's, there's, there's just air in it now there's no water in so moving on along then we have the fridge which is a three-way fridge and um, this is the controls for this here so switch that on by pressing the on switch there Okay, so this is your uh, fuel selection. So you've got mains electric. It won't work because we're not we're not plugged into mains, but uh, that's all been tested to shut. So it's warning you there that we're not plugged into mains. Next one along is uh, gas, which it will work on. We've got the uh, refillable gas bottles on and switched on. Um, and then the next one along is uh, 12 volt. So what that does is it uses the power from the engine alternator when you're traveling. Uh, and it is just for when you're traveling. It won't get the fridge cold. You need to get it cold on gas first or electric first and then switch over to this, which will then just uh, keep it cool when you're traveling. That's your temperature. I'll just switch it back to gas so we can get this operational. So that's your temperature um, selection here. Um, in really hot weather then you want the fridge to be working harder so have it at the upper settings in winter you don't you don't want this fridge work over working over time so it, just leave it on the lower settings because it will freeze up so that's the reason that they give you this option to uh, select your select your temperature so you can see it's operational on gas there we've uh, we've got the gas uh, turned on so it's lit and functioning on gas so switch it off uh, just via that tug there. 
if you're not using the fridge for any length of time it is important that you leave the fridge door slightly ajar because this is then a sealed unit with stagnant air in it and it can start to uh, start to smell so that concludes today's instructional video if you've got any questions i'll be happy to answer those um in the interim between now and you're picking up the motorhome if not then um, i can answer any questions you might have on the day and i look forward to seeing you when you pick up your new motorhome